Destination Dark Zone, written by Susan May. Narrated by Hollis McCarthy and Steve Marvel. With a slight jolt, the train pulled from the station. Standing passengers swayed backward with the motion before swinging forward again as if in some synchronized dance. Outside, the storm whipped up a frenzy of snow flurries, and an almost collective silent sigh escaped from those aboard that they were again moving. Who knew if this storm would gather momentum and close stations or lines? Not a single person wanted to be traveling in this mess any longer than necessary. Rory twisted about and stared through the window as towering buildings slipped by, the L train making its giddy loop around the inner city landscape. The streetlights glowed a vague, muted yellow against the dark streetscape which appeared as empty as if the world had ended. Rory looked over at his mother again, who'd returned to wearing the worried look, after replacing it with a brief and fleeting smile, especially for him. Her eyes now seemed as dark as the sky outside, as she moved her head to peer down the car length through the gaps between passengers. He wondered if it was the scientist lady who worried her. He searched for the black-haired woman and saw she was still there, but had moved a little down the aisle. She appeared to continue to search for something, or someone. Rory decided he didn't want the scientist lady to see his mama looking at her. He wanted him and his mama to remain invisible. So he tapped his mother's hand and said, Mama, how much longer? He didn't much care about the answer, but it was the first thing which sprang into his mind. His mother tilted her head to the side and stared at him, and Rory was pleased to see her eyes had again changed to become the deep, kind eyes of the person he loved and trusted most in the world. Hey, sweetheart, you must be real hungry, right? No, it's okay. I'm just tired. She pulled off his beanie in a playful way and ruffled his hair, then touched the back of her hand to his face. Soon, my love, soon. Three more stations, maybe ten minutes, if that. Then she pushed his beanie back on his head, pulling it over his ears and kissing the top. He nodded his understanding, then glanced toward the scientist lady from just the corner of his eye, so she wouldn't see him looking. To his relief, she had moved even farther away. But because she was so tall, he could still see the top of her head. His gaze traveled back to his mother, who now stared straight ahead, oblivious to her son's concern over a complete stranger. But he still couldn't decide if the woman even was a stranger. Something about her also didn't seem to fit in the scene on the train, like a zebra would stand out among horses. Though she was beautiful to Rory's mind, her hair and clothes weren't all that unusual. Yet there was that unsettled buzzing in his head he'd never experienced before, that he felt had something to do with her. Maybe it was the way she surveyed those around her as if she was hunting, or the strange smile of recognition she gave Rory. Good, he thought, once he knew how many bodies and feet separated them. Still not clear in his mind why it was, in fact, good she was now farther away, or what trouble surrounded the black-haired woman, or why he felt the need to protect his mother from her. Sometimes he didn't understand the way his mind worked. His mama often told him he was special, but whenever he asked why, she'd wrinkle her nose, give him a sweet look, and say, Because you just are. Rory turned from the scientist lady, but continued glancing over to her every few seconds or so. What could possibly happen among all these people? Soon, they'd disembark and leave the strange lady behind, and he'd forget all about her. It would wouldn't he?